it has been stressful a couple of weeks for me because I think my mangrove is fighting for his life. I say maybe because I think my mind may have changed or maybe not, but let me explain what is going on. So ever since I did a large water change about four weeks ago, uh, the mangrove whew, has been acting up. First week, it dropped two leaves at the bottom, uh, two oldest leaves, nice big chunk just turned yellow within the span of two or three days and just fell into the water. And then this one started turning yellow, this little one right here. And that's when I kind of sounded an alarm a little bit. Uh, this one took a little bit longer to turn completely yellow. Right now it's completely yellow. Uh, in fact, it's probably going to drop any minute now. Um, this took about a week and a half. But during this whole period of time, I noticed some of the uh, lower leaves, like these guys, started turning yellow as well. I started noticing it from the bottom side. I was like, oh, it looks a little yellow. And then it transitioned to the top. And now in a span of about two weeks, this is about to turn completely yellow as well, along with this one, and this one, and also this one. It's just kind of like these yellowing, it's just making its way from the bottom of the trunk all the way to the top. Not all the way to the top, not in a good way. But the interesting thing is that at the same time, I'm still getting new growth, like this one unfurled. The same thing here. This one just popped out two weeks ago. Uh, it started unfurling two weeks ago and uh, two, three days ago finally popped open. Same with here. Same deal here. This is all new growth. And about two months ago, I just snipped off these two branches. That's also right before I did the water change. So I snipped off those two branches did a nice big fat water change and uh, this happened. Can't blame me for freaking out. I don't have my hair anymore, so I'm freaked out. So I went on the trusty IG and I asked the hive mind. A lot of people came forward with some good information and I'll kind of filter some of them out. And what I think ended up happening here is number one, a lot of people are saying that this is a natural process. Basically when a tree is growing, it's gonna drop the old leaves and put the energy towards a new one, which seems to be happening. At least I hope that's what's happening here. And then somebody else stepped out and say that okay this may be a sign of uh, deficiency in nitrogen nitrogen and deficiency this came from somebody who studied plants so because of that uh, the plant is kind of sacrificing pulling the resource from the old plant to put in the new growth which has higher hopes and closer to light which completely makes sense with that in mind i did a quick check i don't do a lot of water uh, water tests on this tank as you guys know i checked the phosphate i checked nitrate uh, about four days ago. Phosphate is sitting at 0 0.03, which is a comfortable value for me. Nitrate was sitting at zero. So that is not cool and that will probably partially explain why this is happening. Uh, a while back I did ICP test for this tank, nothing really jumped out. But again, I don't really look at the nutrients level using ICP tested because they're not the most accurate. Uh, I should have done a manual check before. But uh, with the nitrate sitting at zero, this, uh, I have a feeling that may be part of it. I don't usually dose this tank, but in this particular case I did. Um, Neonitrous. I got uh, some of these laying around, I finished it up now, but I'm able to mix more of these by a DIY solution that Telegram put out, and really, really cost effective. So I have been just dumping nit uh, nitrate in here. And I did a test yesterday after I dumped a decent amount, and it was only at, I think it's like, 1.5 if I remember right and I want to bump it all the way up to like 5, 10 or even 15 and nitrate from what I understand is one one parameters that you can just kind of go in right it's not gonna impact things too much because nitrate is not super super bad but of course you don't want to overdo it I am guessing it is the plant's natural process of dropping the old leaves but at the rate that the leaves are yellowing it at the bottom I feel like it's not completely, completely natural. I feel like I could do a better job uh, starting by number one, product, providing more nitrates. And number two, you may you may be noticing that some of the leaves are wet now. I am not a believer in watering or misting mangrove, red mangrove particularly, uh, regularly, because I, uh, from what I understand, red mangrove keep the salt away from the roots and stuff using pressure, not excreting the salt from the leaves. However, there's enough people telling me that uh, it's healthy to spray down the red mango uh, leaves that I started doing it. And I'm using this fancy, fancy bottle. This is the one, look at this. One press, amazing. Look at these guys. This is like the uh, ultra fine mist ones. If you're interested in this, I think everybody has this already, but if you're interested in this, I have Amazon link in the video description below as well. It's been working really well. So I've been spraying it down. Uh, at least once a day now. Figure a little bit of humility uh, never hurts the mangrove or people like me in general. A little bit of humility. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to the updates.
people recommending people, when I say people, is uh, the experts on Instagram. Uh, they're recommending maybe trying root taps. So digging deep on my shelf with all the fish products, I do have this. This was from my aquarium box a while back. This is uh, aquarium plant root taps. Uh, the it's MPK is 15912. But we'll just get something into the sand and see how it goes. And while I was digging there, I found that I still have my Thrive Plus. This was the magic sauce for my planter tank. Probably not that good to use in the reef tank. But for the most part, it's pretty much soft coral tank here, and the mangrove really is a star. It's the mangrove, the uh, soft coral, and then the macroalgae. Soft coral is hardy and I've done ICP, everything looks clean. So I feel like a little bit as an experiment won't hurt. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put in the root taps and I'm going to give it a squirt of the Fry Plus. And we'll see how the mangrove reacts in a week or two and then we'll go from there. So with the magic of editing, let's take a look. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been about two weeks since the last update on the mangrove. And since then, we dropped some leaves. Uh, and looking at the tree right now, oh, that's a big mouth. Uh, look at this. Looks like we got two more, three actually. Make that three yellow leaves ready to drop. These are really dry. And I think the yellowing has pretty much stopped at this point. Oh! That's one. <laughs> Just touch it gently. I bet, yeah, two. Yeah, three. And finally this one. Four. I just slightly touched them and they all came off. May as well. One, two, three, four. Um, this one is hanging on for a little bit, but for the most part, I think that was it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. It probably stopped. But the good news is that we have new leaves popping out. So this is new. Please don't drop. <laughs> and this right here is new. So hopefully it stopped. There are a couple things I did. Um, number one, I sprayed. I sprayed a heck of a lot. Not sure if it actually helped or not, but maybe. And number two, I added nitrate to the tank because the nitrate was sitting at zero ppm. And I'm sure that actually helps because even for corals, right? You shouldn't sit at zero phosphate, zero nitrate. I had a root tap a week and a half ago, basically just shelf a couple. I got these uh, freshwater ones sitting around, shelf a couple like around the, uh, in, into the sand, they float. So I have to shove it really in and maybe it helps. I'm not hundred percent sure. Honestly, it's really hard to see uh, what actually did help and what not. But one of these or a combination of these help uh, alleviated the issue of yellowing leaves and things are yellowing rapidly. Um, I know that plants drop old leaves, but at the same time, the rate it was dropping the, the leaves is just scary. But as a result, I do have a little bit of a little bit more cyanobacteria coming in, but that's no problem. Usually cyano cyanobacteria, it's uh, not a big issue for me. So no problem. And of course, we got some new stickers that might, oh, oh, oh well, it's not here. It just accidentally came off. Yeah. All right, reefers. I felt like I've not talked about this tank in a hot minute. So today there's one thing I really want to do and that is to kind of maintenance this tank in terms of coral growth. Now I'm about to give away some of my corals so that should be okay. For example, the golden rod is going to Lynn and I think uh, some of the gold torch may be going there as well. And I'll give away some of the stuff like uh, the slime ball and other frags I've created uh, to local reefers. But one other thing that I really want to target, it's really this guy right here. Let me slowly zoom in and that is the Montipora is an encrusting variety of Montipora which looks fantastic but it's taking off and taking off in a really big way uh, which involves covering out of corals. For example in the back it may be, I'm not even sure if that's a fox flame or something else, but it's uh, totally engulf engulfing that frag and it is really creeping up onto the golf bonsai quick and we cannot have that happen because I love that coral, damn it. So um, I'm thinking to go in with a screwdriver, which is probably not the best, but I don't have a lot of tools at my disposal, uh, and try to kind of chip off some of these uh, Monty cap. Ideally, I would chip the whole thing off, but I think some of them are so well encrusted that it's going to be an issue. I'm going to be just pulling pieces and chunks out as much as I could. I have the same issue here. This is a TSA uh, death spiral that they sent me, and it just so happened that it also has a piece of the almost the same type of encrusting Monty actually. Now that I look at it, look at that guy. Look at that guy. It came in just like a, 
on the ledge a little bit on the underside, but it completely wrapped around it. So this is an issue, and most likely I'll try to address that as well. Although I feel like the uh, Death Spiral, it's outpacing uh, this one's growth. So it may be okay, I'm not sure. It's kind of interesting looking too, so maybe I'll keep it. But for that one, I definitely need to get it off the rock work. On the other side of the rock, I have a somewhat similar situation, but not as dire. I have the Gong, Gong Pao uh, encrusting. Well, it's not really encrusting. It almost looks like a plating type, so I may leave it. But it's totally growing onto the Force Fire Digitata. Same deal here. I'm kind of worried that the Force Fire is going to bother the other SPS up top. But I feel like in terms of encrusting, because I guess it also branches out, it's not as aggressive in terms of encrusting if you look here and also here. I think if the Digitata Forest Fire is a little bit more focused on branching out as well versus just straight up encrusting like this beast right here. So without further ado, let's go in and get that coral off the rock as best as I could. All right, tools of choice, first choice. I got this little guy right here. Um, I'm not even sure the proper term, but I, I believe in medical, uh, they use it to kind of pinch the uh, blood vessels and whatnot. So we'll try this first. Kind of, I can lift some of the plates off. And when it comes down to it, I'm probably going to use this and then some uh, metal uh, tweezer to kind of scrape off to make sure I get every last piece off because we want to clear that space out for Acroporas and Anacroporas versus the Manipora, which then crust everything. Apologize in advance because I'm trying to focus more on the real life, make sure I don't accidentally bump into other corals and create more frags. No damage there yet, look at that. Good thing I caught it now. Any later, I believe it's probably gonna shade and bleach out the other corals and simply grow onto them. Okay. Man, this tank's gonna be pissed. I need to run some carbon, uh-oh. One eternity later. All right, y'all, here is a real quick aftermath. So as you can see, I think I cleaned that outcropping out pretty well. I see one or two spots still with a little bit of uh, the Monty remnants. Let me see if I zoom in real slow. Yeah, one or two spots with it, so it may come back, but uh, I believe that if I just put some kelp paste on it, it should kill that off completely and we should be free and clear. Um, I do have a frag in the bag. It's kind of flipped over. I need to flip it back, but I, just, I, I retain a frag of the uh, Encrusting Monty. I think it's the uh, Mystic Sunsets. And I looked it up a little bit later on and turns out it's one of the most aggressive growing encrusting monty that's just gonna take over rock so hindsight i should have left it on its own rock now a little bit of updates the og bounce mushroom floated off its plug maybe two weeks ago it's not happy about something i suspect it's a flow because i crank up the flow a little bit and it the, the skirt kept lifting up and just not happy floated off and eventually it landed in this corner it seems happy there so i just leave it there uh it's nice big and poofy now so i guess it's good and i do have all kinds of redactives and mushrooms just kind of propagating on the sand bed, especially the sunkissed. Sunkissed bounds, we got one, two, three, four, five. I uh, got one six in the back. I think I got one more somewhere in the back. So they are doing well. Same thing with the jawbreaker. Uh, started off, I'm not sure if you can see it, the yellow tank is in the way. Started off with that mama that's like halfway solid red back there. It's like a nice big piece now. Uh, sprouted a lot of babies in the back. I think one floated off at some point and attached this rock and just kind of took over this rock, which I do not mind at all. And a lot of them started getting that red streak that Jawbreaker Mushroom gets around the one year mark. And once it get a little bit older, it'll start getting, actually, you know what? I think some of them actually have them already. It started, a little green started coming in. Uh, once it get even older, like that mom right there, which you guys probably cannot see. But uh, the mushrooms, Rotectus, all the soft corals, like the Zoanthus are doing really well in this tank as well. Uh, Ganipora actually dialed back a little bit, they're not as poofy as before. So I think the tank definitely goes through certain cycles in terms of like the available nutrients or trace elements and certain things just find the area a little bit more pleasing. So the other things that's really happy in this tank at the moment is the uh, Pama Lama's Whipping Willow. Now there's a debate on whether this coral can be called a legit Whipping Willow as dubbed by Jake Adam, but from my understanding Remy got the blessing from Jake uh, that this morph that he has 
it's uh, Wicking Willow, but just to be 100% sure, I usually just tagged on Bahama Lama's name just so that people know it's not like Jake Adams uh, Whipping Willow, which seems to be the OG. But it's been really, really slow going for me. Although now I'm happy to report that the polyps are actually long enough to kind of fold over in the in the flow, which is excellent. And I was debating whether to call these polyps or tentacles, but uh, a little Google Kung Fu told me that uh, the stock is the polyp and those little end, those are the tentacles, the little fingers are the tentacles. So it should have eight of those uh, for each polyp. So Bahamalama's Whipping Willow. Another coral that is doing surprisingly well is the uh, GMK, the infamous Grandmaster Kraken uh, Zoas that I got from Lynn quite a while back. That is one of the original polyps. Just look at the size of that thing, man. There's a lot of details, absolutely beautiful. And that's why I think a lot of people love these. But they do have the reputation of mis mysteriously melting away once they get to a certain size. So, so far so good. I guess uh, I don't have any large colony yet, but this frag right here, we're just popping babies off left and right. Look at that. So we got two babies on the sides. And I don't think you can see them because they're really small, but we do have two other uh, butts forming underneath the bottom left polyp right there. And oh, we actually have a, another polyp right here too. So it looks like each of these uh, larger polyp got a, uh, at least one, if not two, baby forming underneath it. So from there, I'll probably frag it up. And then we'll trade them or sell them or give them away locally and we'll go from there. And the other zoos I really like is back there. I think it's the Wolverine. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but it has a really nice swirling pattern in the middle too, which is really cool. And this actually it became my um, recent favorites. This is the Exosphere Zoas. Do not attempt to adjust your monitor. It is a legit color. It's like a nuclear green center and skirt and has some like... Uh, just weird exospheric <laughs> pattern in the middle. It just looks really cool, man. I just love these. And it's just so bright. And for the longest time, it's not growing. But ever since I stopped touching it and just left it there, it started spreading. I'm hoping that it's going to spread onto the um, aqua rock and we'll go from there. We'll talk a little bit more about Zoas later on. There are certain things I uh, picked up along the way that I would love to share with you guys as well. And we'll also go over the uh, Anacropora, SPS, also some of the other stuff like uh, Euphilias, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things. Man, I miss weekly video because I talk a lot and I feel like it's, it kind of sucks to jam everything in one single video that's like super long, half an hour or 40 minutes long. Nobody's going to sit through these. Uh, but if you do if you do actually sit through stuff like this, even in multiple, multiple sittings, I really appreciate you. And you are indeed one of the hardcore Reef Squad. And leave a message. I appreciate you. Just so that we kind of make a full circle in terms of this update, I just want to show you guys how the mangrove tree looks now. It's been about a month and a half or so since the uh, yellow leaves started dropping. And as you can see, all the leaves are nice, healthy, plump, and all the tips are once again, uh, actually they never quite stopped. It just started, uh, it continued to shoot out new growth like so, and uh, it just never paused. And so looking back, I feel like it was a combination of probably nitrogen deficiency as well as it's just natural cycle of dropping the older leaves. Although, like I mentioned in, in the earlier video, that uh, the rate the leaves dropping, that didn't feel natural. So I feel like there wasn't deficiency. And uh, by doing the root tap as well as the introducing nitrogen and whatnot into the water, it definitely helped this tree recover. At least it stopped dropping yellow leaves. So thank you so much for all of you guys who show concern and offer advice. Thank you. But now, of course, the issue is that with all those extra nutrients in the water, look at this. We got some cyanobacteria on the sand bed now that I have to address with a water change. And of course, I need to do some maintenance on the glass as well. But everything in this tank is looking massive and looking amazing. And I think uh, in a future video, I'll go over this tank because this tank, dude, it's, it's an interesting tank. It's a really interesting tank. It just pretty much went all natural out and then things are just like filling out really nicely. But again, don't want to make this video too long. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and follow up uh, in a future video where I'll share a little bit more on with this tank but once again i'm just really happy with the progress of this mangrove i was i was shitting brick let's just let's just use it shitting brick i was literally shitting brick i was like oh my god i'm gonna lose this but um yeah turns out well and by the way i've been uh recently started getting more into plants 
you guys may rec uh, recognize some of these guys right here, but again, this is a reef channel, not plant channel. So maybe I'll share a little bit more about my plant collection down the road. But for now, I'm just really happy that the mangrove worked out. Let me show you all the yellow leaves, by the way. There's all these, I counted. There was a uh, 10 total, including like two other larger ones that I did not save. But uh, yeah, I was shitting bricks, but I'm just, once again, really happy that everything worked out. I am actually considering potentially shutting down this tank. Uh, for some uh, different project, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of hard to say goodbye to a, a beautiful mangrove like this. And I, if I do shut down this tank, I don't think I'll be moving this mangrove to the 135. I just don't have the space for it, and it's not built to be like a lagoon. So I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. So we'll see how it goes. But I do want to at least like show you guys how the mangrove tank, like the tank itself looks before I do anything drastic. But anyways, I'll catch up with you guys next video. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic rest of the day. What do I need to feed? Yeah, what, what are you guys eating? Just curious. Uh, Something in the bag. Nice. That's fair. <laughs> it's prepared by the farm staff. Which I'm okay, not, I'm all not right. Sure of I don't know. Piece. I work at this store. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Oyster oh, piece, Fido, Benefits. It's got a combination of a secret blend of everything as far as the corals right. would consume. You name it, they eat it. David tried to salvage it so bad. <laughs>